All right, good morning, people of YouTube. So this time we are back with another deck profile. This time we have what's going to be one of the best decks at the North American Nationals. We have Beelstar with the Guru Engine. So this deck is one of the big boogeymen of this format. Um, this is going to be a full power deck list with both the Gabumon X and the Guru Mon X at four copies. Um, so we will have these cards both at four until March, in which case this deck basically needs a new bottom end. But for the meantime, this is going to be one of the decks that you're going to have to beat going into this format. So if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into some of the card by card. So let's do the this thing, make these cards a wee bit bigger. Uh, starting off with the eggs, the best egg that you could be using is the BT6 Suno. Um, this card will just let you draw more cards as you're trashing things, and as you're going up every piece in your line, you will be trashing things. If you decide to play Uko in this list, then you should probably consider play a fifth egg. Um, I am choosing to include the ST16 Pseudomon in this list just because it can help you draw extra cards if you are ever at a low number of cards in hand, uh, which you can discard a lot of cards at once in this list, so potentially you could be. Um, this is definitely the worst egg of the of the deck, like you want to be hitting this BT6 Suno. Um, so adding a fifth egg does kind of hinder your consistency, and this deck is pretty fast so you should be able to get away playing four. But if you do want a fifth egg, this is what I would go with. So the new card in EX5 that we are getting for the rookie line is going to be this Gabumon X. This card has a pretty good inheritable effect that will give you protection by putting sources back at the bottom of your deck, which is pretty good. Um, but the main reason you'd play this card is because it's an on-play and when digivolving reveal four. It grabs the cards that you don't want to go to trash and then lets you trash a card in your hand that you do want to put in your trash. So this card will pick up your Garurumon or your X antibody pieces. So you can pick up a Gabumon X off of its own effect, but you cannot pick up any of your other Gabumons. Um, and it can pick up any of your level fours, basically, that you're playing, uh, except for the Ginkaku. Um, but this card is absolutely fantastic, and it lets you trash your seven cost options. This is truly a phenomenal piece and something that you want to be hitting very early and consistently in the mid-game. Not only that, but it is a blue card, so it unlocks blue in your sources, um, letting you use all your fancy blue options like Cock Breath. So, the main four of Gabumon that we are playing is going to be the one from Starter Deck 16, because it is the only purple one that's good that we are allowed to play four copies of still. Um, it's got a nice win attacking draw one, trash one, just like most of your other Gabumons and most of your other pieces in the deck, but it can give you memory whenever you're promoting it up. This is a really good card to pull off of your nail bone and stuff like that, so that way you can evolve into another Gabumon X and then keep the cycle going. So we are playing the limited Gabumon from BT2 and the limited Gabumon from Starter Deck 6, because they are limited. And rounding out the rookies, I did want to play 11. So rather than play the bad Gabumon that's just like a vanilla, it's a three cost like 4K vanilla, I'm choosing to play an Uko, because what this deck wants to be doing is it wants to be chipping your opponent down really quickly, and this card can help facilitate that strategy. You don't really need that many copies of this card. You kind of just need it to fill out your extra rookie slots. Um, but I do really like this card for what it is. It lets you promote extra eggs, get extra chips. It's pretty aggressive, and I like it for any uh, fast, aggressive deck going into the EX5 format. And the main offender that makes this deck broken is we have the four copies of Guru Ramon X. So when you digivolve into this, you draw one for evolving, and then for its effect, you draw two more, and then you trash two cards in your hand. Well, that's pretty dumb. If you have Guru Ramon in your sources, you're going to gain a memory. Um, in addition, you can evolve off of Guru Ramon for just zero memory. So if you are going Beelstar and using Nailbone, you can pull back a Guru Ramon and then evolve into this, draw three, trash two, and gain a memory. You just stockpile advantage very quickly. Not only that, this card helps you set up your trash in the early game and the mid game. Uh, this is just a phenomenal piece, and sometimes you don't even really mind evolving for three on top of any of your Gabumons. Um, this is just a phenomenal card. It also has that protection effect, uh, which makes your swings with the Wear Guru Rumon and the Metal Guru Rumon Ace uh, a lot more consistent, and that's pretty nice. Um, 
But the main reason you're playing this is it is literally just scatter mode, but when digivolving, so you don't ever have to worry about manually killing scatter mode. This is just way better in every way. Uh, plus, it's a blue source, so you can play things like Cockbreath with this uh, with this on the board. Um, I am choosing to play the one of scatter mode. You could cut this for another copy of this Garurumon. We have the BT, or I'm sorry, the Starter Deck 6 Garurumon. Um, and the main reason you would play this card is if you didn't think the Starter Deck 16 Garurumon was enough. Uh, we are playing four copies of that Garurumon, but if you wanted a fifth one, this would be the one to include, and you would cut the scatter mode for this. Um, it has that nice when attacking inheritable effect to draw one trash one, which is good for your plays. Plus, it's a four cost to hard play. That makes it really nice. Um, but again, this is the same inheritable effect that your main Garurumon plays which is this one. Um, and this also has a win digivolving draw one trash one, which makes it a lot better. Plus this has a security effect. Um, you would just consider including the Garurumon over this slot if you wanted to up that consistency and play more Guru pieces to make sure that you are guaranteeing the, the evolve from Garurumon into Guru X. But I do really like this card for all it does. It also functions as a, as a security bomb, making your security even scarier in this deck, um, which I really, really like, and it, this is just one of the best pieces in the list. Um, scatter mode is really cool, especially off the BT2 Gabu. Um, one of the things that I really like doing if I'm going first is evolve Gabu in the back, hard play scatter mode, if I draw the scatter mode in my opening hand. Then on my next turn, I can promote Gabu. It'll usually have this Sunomon under it, um, so that if I discard something, I can draw. Then I can swing with Scatter Mode. If it dies, I'll draw three, trash two. Um, trigger this Suno, draw another one. And then off of that, you should have enough cards to draw into this Gabu X. Then you can evolve into the Gabu X, dig even deeper, pitch even more cards, and really get your plays going as early as possible. Um, so this card is kind of a... Uh, it's one of those cards that you use to put on the tempo, um, especially in the early to mid game. I do really like the Ginkaku promote in this list. I am choosing to play two because Nailbone is such a really important piece with Beale Star. Um, and yeah, having a rush body that you can constantly cycle back with Nailbone is really fantastic. Uh, the only level five that Beale Star I think should consider playing is going to be this Were Garurumon from Starter Deck 16, and that's because you can give it the protection off of your Gabu X, your Garuru X, um, and make it so that way whenever you're attacking, once per turn, you can trash a card and unsuspend, giving you two checks off of one stack, making Beale Star's job a lot easier. Um, if you do two checks with this, and then Beale Star, and then Nailbone, you are one promote away from being lethal, which is really fantastic, um, and this is a really good play enabler. I just felt like you don't really need that many copies of this, especially since it is searchable off the Gabumon X. Um, so I'm electing to only play two. So for the level sixes, uh, Beale Star is the name of the game. We are playing four copies of this card. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we want to be pitching our seven cost options to make this card as cheap as possible, and then we want to be playing this card to either be answering our opponent's board or to go as wide as possible. This is absolutely phenomenal. We are playing a single copy of the Metal Guru on Ace, just because this is searchable. Um, and if we do search this, then it makes our opponent really consider if they want to attack into us. Um, I do like this card a lot. This card can give you something to do with your Rare Guru Mon after you're done swinging. Um, and that's, that's kind of nice. This is a card that I don't think is entirely necessary, but play around with it. You might decide you like it. Especially since it is searchable off of the Gabumon, I do really I do really like the inclusion of it as a one of. Uh, for the level sevens, we got the one copy of Death X and the one copy of Ruin Mode. Um, if you wanted, you could go up on either of these by cutting this Metal Guru Ace or cutting one of these options. Um, I don't think you need that many level sevens in this list, but since you are playing level sixes from your hand for so cheap, this can help you just really put control back in your favor, uh, especially if you Beal Star uh, into a Nail Bone into a Ruin mode and then threaten Lethal and make it so that they can't do anything about it. Um, that's really fantastic. Uh, also, 
Death Axemon can help you get back in the game if your opponent tries to rush as hard as you are rushing them, or into things like the Mirror Match, and that's really good. Um, so both of these cards definitely have their place, and you should consider playing at least one of each. So now we are going into the options, and that's where this deck gets terrifying. So I am playing the four copies of Rivals and the four copies of Cockbreath because I really want my opponent to fear my security. Um, these cards are really fantastic whenever you're playing them back off of Beelstar's effect, and just having a really good array of options in your security or in your hand to pitch off your effects is really fantastic and what you really want to be seeing for your game plan. So we are playing three copies of Nailbone. This is your main go wide card. If your opponent doesn't have anything that you want to remove, you Beal Star into Nailbone, then you go wide and you go deal with this. And if they can't, then they just kind of lose. And that's really fantastic for you. Um, so I really like this card. Again, in security, it is another bomb. You are playing three of this and four copies of the Security Guru, which means that you have seven cards that just play bodies out of your security. <clears throat> Which is truly wonderful. So I am playing a couple one ofs for to fill out my option slot. We have the standard uh, one and one of the Happy Bullet Showering and the one of Gawalt Schwarmer. These are standard three Musketeer cards. Gawalt Schwarmer has a niche with cards like uh, D or with decks like D Brigade and anything Ukomon related existing in the format. Uh, Gawalt is pretty good. Um, Happy Bullet is another security bomb and serves a niche, again, against go-wide strategies. So I do like the one-in-one -in -one inclusion. It makes the odds of them dying in our security even higher. Um, well, except for in Gwalch's case, because its security effects is just to go to hand. Um, but this card is really niche, and you could consider cutting it, but since we are going to see D-Brigade and Ukomon do well at Nats, I do not recommend cutting this card from your list. Um... And then I do play the one copy of Howling Crusher. Uh, so for those of you newer players, this is a card that says trash all Digivolution cards under all of your opponent's Digimon. It is a 7 cost blue option from all the way back in BT1. So as inheritable effects get better, this card gets better. Um, there's more protection in this game than ever. There are things like Gomamon in this, in this card game uh, that just kind of like make your sources float back. Um, you have all these cards gaining value off of things that are in their inheritables, things like Ulforce, things like Gammon, um, things like Greymon. Um, this card is kind of a catch-all answers to decks that have big stacks that you can't really do anything about, uh, like Machine Dramon, Black War Greymon X. Um, this card just gets better as the game progresses. And while this isn't a super proactive card, like you are Beal Starring and then not dealing with anything, you're just removing sources, sometimes that's what you need. Um, so I do like this card's inclusion in the list. And then rounding out the list, we do have our one copy of Calling from Darkness because it's a purple deck. Uh, this card grabs back Beal Star and our level 7s, plus any combo piece that we could need in our Digimon line. Uh, we do play for our Tamers. The starter deck map that lets us start at 3 memory and gain memory whenever we are discarding things, letting us extend our plays even more. Um, I have considered playing 3 copies of this card. I do kind of recommend that. It is truly fantastic, especially if you can get 2 of these in play. Like, you are just snowballing memory at that point. And then I am electing to play the BT6 map. So, something that this card does for you is it does unlock a blue source... Um, allowing you to Beal Star and then go into things like uh, Cock Breath, because just using Beal Star doesn't let you play the seven cost option if you can't fulfill the option's color requirement. Um, so it is important to have a blue source e either in this card or in like a Gabumon X or something. Uh, but not only that, this card is letting you draw extra cards and gain extra memory whenever you are promoting basically anything in this deck. Um, this is a Truly phenomenal card, even if you are not playing Bond, uh, which you can't because you don't have any blue Gabumon. So you do ignore the level requirement, but you don't ignore the color requirement. Uh, so you cannot play Bond of Friendship in this deck. Um, but even still, the ability to just gain memory and draw cards while unlocking a blue source is kind of exactly what this deck needed. 
Uh, so this card definitely fulfills a niche, and I am electing to play two copies of it. So that is it for the list. This is a deck that I'm planning on testing a lot and playing a lot in the start of the format, um, because that's all I'm going to get, basically. <laughs> because this card and this card are both going to one, but... Rightfully so. Gabumon X and Garurumon X are both truly broken cards, and you should take advantage of them while you can. So, hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile, and we will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.